I think what cream can be looked at as this is the start of, of an idea and uh, and the breakdown of categorization you know in music that really we could we could move into all these areas and improvise and extend ourselves <laughs> Clapton was born on March 30th, 1945, in the small English village of Ripley in Surrey. Eric Clapton's real father was a, a soldier who had served in Britain during World War II. He was Canadian, and after the war, he returned to Canada, and this left Eric to be brought up by his grandmother. And the woman who he believed was his older sister was, in fact, his mother. And he was musical from a pretty young age. He didn't have any particular training as such, but he got an acoustic guitar when he was 13 and took it up in earnest a couple of years later and then really took it up and discovered the blues, and that was it. Jack Bruce was born on May 14, 1943, in Bishop Briggs, Scotland. He was born into quite a musical family. His parents were both very much into music and uh, they actually ended up moving around a lot when he was young. Uh, he apparently went to around 14 different schools. He got taken into the Scottish Royal Academy of Music. Unfortunately, they let him go because he was discovered uh, playing jazz, which at the time was something of a terrible crime. Ginger Baker arrived on August 19th, 1939 in Lewisham, South East London. Ginger's father had uh, died in Greece during World War II. He was, he was a soldier. So Ginger was brought up by his mother in London, and he was quite an unruly boy. Ginger Baker started playing drums at the age of 15, and it said that he actually had lessons from Phil Seaman, who was quite a, a legendary kind of leading jazz drummer, which you can kind of tell influenced that kind of jazz feeling that he brought to his performance. So if you look at all three of them when they were younger, they were all quite influenced by jazz and blues. Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker had been in a few bands together before Cream, but all in London. They've been in Blues Incorporated, and they've been in the Graham Bond organisation, which is a kind of jazz R&B group. The defining aspect of their relationship, which will continue to be the defining aspect of their relationship throughout the history of Cream, is that, I don't know if hate is too strong a word, but they definitely had their differences and fought all the time. Jack left the Graham Bond organisation after Ginger had threatened him with a knife. And these two people were wholly unsuitable to have any kind of professional relationship whatsoever. Eric Clapton joined the Yardbirds in 1963 when their original guitarist left, and soon after, their manager Giorgio Gomelski negotiated a deal with EMI Records. It was really obvious that Clapton was a cut above the rest. So you had the graffiti in London saying Clapton is God. He got the reputation for being very, very good, and kind of a purist. So he left the Yardbirds when he felt they were going too pop and he didn't like it and he wanted to stick to the sort of roots of electric blues. John Mayall led Blues Breakers and John Mayall was really one of the, the founding fathers of the British blues rock boom. His band, his Blues Breakers, were possibly the, the finest, most popular proponents of this blues-based British music which was taking such a hold. Eric Clapton, found himself in Blues Breakers. And essentially, anyone who's anyone, there were so many groups forming at the time, wanted Clapton to be part of them, simply because he was the best. It was Ginger Baker that had the idea for the supergroup, and he asked Eric Clapton, and apparently they were driving along one day, when Ginger Baker put it to him. And Eric Clapton turned around and said, yeah, fine, as long as we have Jack Bruce. And Ginger Baker, who had this terrible relationship with Jack Bruce, they'd been fighting on stage, they'd been smashing up each other's instruments, was so shocked, apparently he almost crashed the car. The name Cream was Eric Clapton's idea. It was part hubris, because uh, they all thought they were the, the best at their instruments. But there was a, a, another aspect to the name Cream, in that it was meant to be a full-scale, three-way collaboration. And it was this idea of blending 
of the talents. Cream played their first gigs in 1966. They played at the Twisted Wheel and then at the sixth annual Windsor Jazz and Blues Festival. They hadn't written that many songs, so they filled up the rest of the set with blues covers. But this went down really well with the audience. So Jack Bruce became the band's leading vocalist, essentially because Eric Clapton was quite shy. And he started doing a few backing vocals later on in their discography, which brought him to the forefront. And he did sing lead on a, on a few, but Jack Bruce really was, was the main man.